Special Agent Philip Jones. Today's date is August 15th, 2018. Interviewing uh, Nicole Kessinger with uh, Mark Hilaire. talked in passing and then started to get to know each other and we started hanging out pretty frequently around I want to say like the last week of June somewhere around there um and have continued to talk until then yeah. um he informed me that he did have two kids I knew that he had two daughters um he also told me that he was currently in the process of a separation from his wife um and so Okay. Are there mosquitoes on me? <laughs> that um, he's in, he was in the process of a separation from his wife, and as far as I knew, that was becoming pretty finalized. Um, and then Monday afternoon, he told me that she was like gone, and he didn't know where she was. And at that point, I don't think that it set off any alarms in my head just because, I mean, I've, I have friends that I text and if I don't hear from them for like three hours or six hours or even like a couple days, 
I don't feel concerned about where they're at because it's kind of a standard thing for me. Um, but then she didn't come home that night. I was like, okay, well, maybe she'll come back. And I was kind of under the impression since they're separating that maybe she decided to take the kids. Maybe she decided to just leave for a few days. I don't know. I was just, I, I, I felt like maybe she was just trying to get some space. And I figured maybe that was why she left her stuff there to just get some quiet. Um, and then ye yesterday rolled around and she's still not around. Um, and that started to seem really concerning for me that people still don't know where she is. Um, and they don't know where those little girls are. And, um, at that point, I was like, you know what? I, I hope something did not happen to her and did not happen to her children. And that was when I decided that it's probably a good idea to just come talk to you guys and just let you know that I've been spending time with Chris and that that's as far as this got. So I just, that, that's it. Well, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, appreciate it. So, so prior to June, did you know him? Did you guys have any, did you know him, any relationship? Any, no. didn't know him at all? No, I didn't Maybe know him at all. Met at work in, in June? Mm -hmm. Okay. And what's the company that you guys both work for? We both work for, well, I'm a contractor, so technically I don't work for the same company, but we both work for a company called Andarco Petroleum Corporation. Like, we're in the same building at the same time. Yeah. So we don't actually, like, work together. It's literally like a, I see him in the hallway in passing kind of thing. It's not even. Okay. And then what, what do you do then? What's your position? Uh, I do human health and safety and environment stuff. So HSE. Okay. And you're still currently employed there? Yes, sir. Okay. Right. And then, so you guys met. Did you start communicating um, you know, via email, text, phone messages? How did you? How did sort of relationship develop? So we started talking through text message and through phone calls. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Take your time. Take your time. <laughs> that's how it. I mean, that's how it started. Sure. Okay. And then, did your relationship develop beyond friendship? Yes. Okay. All right. And then, did he say anything to you about what, where he thought the relationship was, was going to be going, or what he was hoping for for the future? I think that he was looking for a relationship with me, um, but I knew that he was in the process of a separation, so for me I was kind of having a hard time with that, where it's like, you know, because he, he told me, oh, we're putting the house up for sale, we're putting the house up for sale, um, and I told him, you know, I'm not comfortable with, with considering you my significant other and vice versa while you are still like in the midst of a divorce like yeah, I was like you know once you and her are finalized with the divorce I'm like once you and your kids have your new location that you wanted to move to set up once all of that is where it needs to be I'm like then you and me can talk about you know eventually like dating seriously and, and like building something with each other but I mean that was kind of the my standstill on that and you know and I I feel guilty that I should have like waited to I guess like initiate anything that we had together um, until after his divorce was finalized as opposed to doing it while they were in the midst of separating with like the, like talking about it. Oh, and, and this, I mean, it's not uncommon, and it's not, uh, we, we appreciate you being forthright with us and telling us about this, because it, it is significant, you know, we're trying to go through everything that we can as far as the investigation right now to figure out what happened or what's happening, so we appreciate you telling us about this, I know it's going to be easy for you to do. Um, so, can you tell me a little bit more though, so you, do, you guys started talking, and then when did it develop into more than just talking and more than just friendship? It's like the beginning of July. Yeah, July. Mm -hmm. right. And then, uh, did you guys continue to see each other up until, uh, would it be Monday? I saw him on Saturday, so it was last time I saw him. Okay, okay, and then can you walk me through that on Saturday, um, like, what did you guys meet, do, what was that? Um, 
so when we spent time together, I didn't really like go to his house. Like we would spend time at my house. Um, he uh, we went out to dinner. That's what we did. He said he had a babysitter, and he had to wait for the babysitter. And we met up. I don't even know what time he came over. Probably like five or six. And we actually we tried to go to a restaurant down the street from my house but I didn't like the menu. So we left and then we went to another one off of like 144th. It's called the Lazy Dog. And we went up there and we had dinner. And then he came back to my house and hung out with me for probably like 15 minutes. And then he left because he said he had to go to the babysitter. And so... And that was Saturday night? That was Saturday. That was the last time I saw him. Wow. Okay. And did you guys, was there anything else uh, that you did? Just, was it just dinner? Did you go any place else? Did you visit any other? No, we just went to dinner. That's one of the only times I've actually ever been out in public with him. But, yeah, just dinner. Yeah. And so for the most time in the past, uh, whenever you guys were together, it was at your, your house? Or was it like, you know, going out somewhere? Typically not. I mean, we've done a few things, but not Saturday, can you remember what the time frame was? I or think it was probably like 5 to 10 ish. Five somewhere ten. around there. And I don't even think it was 10 because we had to be back by 10. So I think it was a little bit before that. I think it was like 9 30. But somewhere in there. And I remember it might have been like a little after 5 2. All I know is the babysitter was going to get there around that time and we had to be back before 10. So it would take drive time sometime in that five hour window. And when he came to your house, he to pick you up in your house? I don't or, really like ride in his car. I've been in that that white car they have once, mm -hmm. but other than that, we take my truck everywhere, always. When, when he came to your house, what vehicle would he drive? Ah, uh, you know, I didn't even pay attention to that, but probably his. I don't think he really takes that ATV truck anywhere when he doesn't have to. Okay, so usually he, when he comes see you, he would get the white vehicle. Yeah. Okay. And then. When you guys went out, did you take your vehicle to go wherever you were going? Yep. Okay. Okay. And so you had dinner. Was there anything else? Any other discussion about anything? Nothing out of the ordinary. Nothing ordinary. Did you talk about anything about the relationship with his, his wife? Did that come up? Nothing? No. I mean, I've been helping him trying to, like, find a new spot. So I'm sure we talked about, like, hey, because I know we were trying to set up a time this week to go, like, have him... He, want, he was looking for a two-bedroom apartment. He wanted to get a, an apartment that was for him and his girl. And so, sometimes, I mean, we talk about that recently because he's just like, I gotta find a place. And we were supposed to go look at some stuff this week. We were trying to get it set up um, before all this happened. Um, so, I mean, like, a little bit of stuff, but it's never, like, directly him and his wife. It's typically, like, this is what's going on. And I'm it's just like, well, I will give you a helping hand if you're trying to find a spot like I'll look at apartments for you guys and like I would tell them oh I found an apartment that's like got a pool for your kiddos and it's got a park for your kiddos and it's close to work and close to the gym and and you know and trying to make sure that he got a place that was close to where um his ex-wife would be staying so that they were all you know essentially located to each other and just really trying to help him to get set up so that he could have a good working relationship with her, um, with the kids, and then he could be in a location that was like safe and centrally located and good for the kids themselves when he had them. And so that, I mean, just trying to like help him to like transition and then be a good dad and make sure that he was there and do what he needed to do. And then after uh, Saturday, when was the next time you heard from him? Oh, I talked to him all the time. He okay. hasn't texted me today because I asked him yesterday not to, but if I was to text him right now, I bet he'd respond in like five minutes. Okay. And so he has no idea that I'm talking to you guys. No, nobody does. My dad is the only person that's in on this loop. Like, mm -hmm. no one I know knows that I spent time with him. I don't think anybody he knows knows that I spent time with him. Like, besides the three people at this table, it's just him. Nobody, have no coworkers, no friends. Nobody. Okay. Are you and you're confident that he didn't say anything to anybody about your relationship? I'm pretty positive he did not. Okay. So. And then, um, as far as texts and phone calls since Saturday, has anything been odd to you? Anything that he said or written that 
it strikes you as being strange or, or not truthful? Or? No. Well, so I talked to him on Sunday night and he was fine on Sunday night. I didn't have any issues with him. Um, and then Monday, I think we shot each other like a couple texts at work, but him and I get real busy, both of us do at work. So it was just kind of like, and it was like just a mundane bullshit conversation, you know. Um, and then Monday afternoon, I came home from work and I was actually, I had a friend over in the house um, who is not involved or knows anything about this at all. But like, I, I went to meet up with a friend and then um, he kept, he texted me and told me something along the lines of like, my wife and my kids aren't home. And I was just like, okay. And that, then that was, he... That was on Monday. It was on Monday. Do you know what time it was? Uh, honestly, I'm kind of upset with him right now. Just disappointed with him. So I, uh... I'll talk to him right now. But, um, probably, realistically, I'll tell you. It happened, like, right after I walked in the door to meet up with my friend. And I... So Monday, I got off of work at 3 p.m. It takes me probably like 40 minutes to get home, and I had just walked in the door. So how about 3.45? That's probably about right. Okay. And so he, he sent that then, and I was like really confused, but I wasn't concerned at that point because it was just like, you know, me and she's not home. Like, she at the grocery store? I mean, it was just, it was like, all right. I didn't realize the seriousness of the situation at that point in time. Um, but no, she didn't come home that night. And then um, I talked to him that night too. And he really didn't seem like... I mean, he was like concerned about his kids, definitely. But he didn't seem like he was at that point worried that something horrible had happened. He was just kind of like, I don't know where they're at. It's stressing me out. And I, I mean, and I could hear it in his voice. Like he sounded kind of scared. Like he was just worried about them, you know? He's like, I don't know where she is. Like, I don't know why she did her stuff. I mean, so he was, he was worried, but it wasn't, yeah, I mean, worried like I think somebody would sound if somebody they loved was not at home. You know, but at the same time, I think at that point, he was convinced, I was convinced that she probably just left the day. Like, I really thought, I was like, you know what, I bet she just needed a break from him, and she needs some quiet, and she probably took the kids, and she'll be back in like a day. That's kind of like how I had it in my head. So, did he say anything to you about whether anything was missing from the house, not missing, if there's any signs of anything uh, suspicious? He, he just said that she left. Or he, did, he didn't know where she was. He didn't know where she was. He didn't say she left. He's just like, I don't know where she's at. And the kids as well. Yeah. Okay. okay. So, and I mean, and I think he sounded genuinely concerned. I mean, those are his kids. And from the impression that I get, he's a great dad. I mean, he's all about them. He loves those little girls. And so, you know, for me, I, like I could tell when I could like hear it in his voice that he sounded concerned. It was just like those little girls, I'm sure, you know, and, and I think he's just worried about the whole situation, like, I don't know where else we are, are at, I don't know why she left the country, you know, I can't get over it. And then since, um, so since then, since on Monday, uh, have there been, have you spoke to him on the phone, or has it just been text messages, or both, or? I think, um, I did not talk to him on the phone on Tuesday, it was yesterday. Um, you, you, I'm sorry, you did or you didn't? I did not. Did I not. I, we texted each other yesterday, but there was no, like, phone conversation yesterday. Okay. But Monday he was on the phone? Yeah, at, at night. Like, at the end of the night, I yeah. talked to him. I just remember being, like, really tired and I wanted to go to bed. But I was just, like, trying to make sure he was okay, trying to make sure his family was okay, asking him, like, if he heard anything. Was it a long conversation or a short one? I think we talked twice. Like, I think we talked a little bit. Probably pretty extended. Mm -hmm. yeah. did, it, did anything jump out at you in that conversation that was different or that was odd? Or not? Did he say anything to you about anything with you and him 
like anything had changed or that anything was different now or nothing at all? Um, no. Okay, so just seemed concerned and just... Uh, yeah, just like you were just worried. I mean, I was worried too. I just didn't. I, I thought she just left her day. That's really what I thought. And then again, like yesterday, when she just like didn't come home, I was like, oh, maybe this is like something really serious. And and again, I mean, like with my friends, it wouldn't be something that would draw attention if I couldn't talk to them immediately. And I knew that they were going through separation. So the fact that one person is leaving for maybe a day. That doesn't seem out of the ordinary for me, because somebody who can want to leave. The fact that all of her stuff was still there, though, that seems kind of strange. And did he tell you about anything that was going on with, with her, as far as was she seeing anybody or was there? Um, had she talked about plans about what she was going to do, if she was going to leave, or if she was going to go live someplace else? As far mm -hmm. as I knew, um, he kept it pretty short and sweet. He was doing, like, when he, if she ever came up in conversation, he was very, like, civil about her. Like, he never had anything, like, negative or derogatory to say about her. He just told me, you know, we're separating, and this is why, and that was about it. And then when... Um, did, did he say why? Did he say what his what his reason was. The reason was for separating. He just said that they like really didn't connect very well anymore. And um, I don't know, I think financially they had like different ideas of how they wanted to live their lives. So, I mean, but he never, I mean, just wasn't like negative about her, you know, and it was something that was pretty removed from our, our, what we had going on. So, you know, um, and I know she's a good mom, but she's a good mom. Um, but, no, I mean, nothing, nothing like did, he, did he ever say, did he say that he wasn't in love with her anymore, or anything like that? No. Okay. Was he in love with you? Did he tell you? He was. Yeah, not a mosquito. Were you in love with him? I think it could have gotten there had things played out, like, in a decent manner, but they're not, because this is a horrible situation and I don't know where she's at and it's really concerning me that this woman and her children cannot be located. It's it's not okay. It scares me and I'm worried for all of them. Yeah, and we are too and obviously we want to get to the bottom of it. And, and that's that's you know some of the questions that I'm, that I'm asking you that I'm going to ask are just oh, trying to get to the bottom of this. Understandable. Yeah, and so when, when, he, when he told you that he was in love with you, did that, it was that, was that recent, was that uh, right away, you know, was, was that like in July, like, or? It was probably like a couple of weeks ago. Okay. And did he talk about you know, anything on top of saying, you know, I'm in love with you now, and that I want to have a life together, and that I don't want to be in my life? Like that, that, like that? I mean, like, you know, we talk about the future, I think all couples do talk about the future, but it was never like, hey, I'm like leaving her, we're going to get a house together, you're moving in with me. It was never like this a, like very forward thing. And you know, and I even told him, I was like, if we're going to build a relationship, one thing is that if you're getting a divorce, you've been married for a long time, I think it would be wise for you to spend a lot of time on your own. I was like, and I, pre I recently got out of a relationship earlier this year, and I think it's also healthy for me to spend time on my own. And I told him, I was like, you know, like I... I respect, like, monogamy, I don't think it's the situation, but, like, but, um, at the end of the day, it's like, you need space, and I would tell him that, it's like, you know, once you guys, all your paperwork's finalized, and you guys have decided to separate, and you're in your own spot with your kids, I was like, I think the days that you're with your kids, you need to be with them, like, full time. You know, I'm not ready to meet your children. He didn't even ask me to meet his children. I mean, not yet, you know, but I told him, I was like, in the future, eventually, if we get to that point where we think we're ready, yes, but I'm not ready to meet your kids. They're not ready to meet me. You're not ready to have me meet them. And I would just tell him, you know, like, I think we should take our time. Like, ideally, I would only like to hang out with you, like, two or three days, you know, on the days that you don't have your kids. And I was like, in the rest of those days, I was like, spend time with yourself, man. I was like, you've been in a relationship for a really long time. Like, just spend time, like, doing whatever it is that you do that makes you happy, you know? And, and, and really try to, like, take a responsible approach 
to getting in a relationship with someone has children. That is what I do. Is what I do. I mean, should I have waited till he was like officially, completely, 100% on paper divorced and moved out of that house? Yes, that's my mistake. But after that, everything going forward was really just me trying to, to, to do it in the manner that I felt would be like healthiest for him, for me, for his ex, for his children, and his And now you already said that you have never met his children. Nope. Did you ever meet his wife? Nope. Were you ever at a house? Once. Okay. When was that? I bet it was probably the second week of July. Second week? Yeah. So it was just that one time? It was just one. I had no desire to go over there. I mean, that's... Like the situation where he's living with somebody that he's separating from, like it's not my life. Like that's their life, you know. And that's why I tell him, like the time you spend with me, you spend it in my house because this is our space, and that's not my space. And for me, I think it's really disrespectful to go over there. And so um, we stopped by there once, like on the way to my house, and I was there for maybe like 15 minutes. And I saw a picture of her holding her kid, and I was like, oh my gosh, she's so beautiful. And I remember thinking, like, God, oh, your little girl is beautiful too. And, um, and we left, and I remember telling him after that, it was like, have you ever thought about, like, really trying to fix your marriage with her? And he's like, I don't really want to. And I was just like, man, like, you got a beautiful wife, like, she's the mother of two of your kids, and I'm just like you already have all of this stuff like you already have the house and the car and the kids and the marriage and the wife and i'm like are you sure you don't want to fix that i'm like because what if you like try to start over with somebody else and like what if hypothetically like we didn't work out or or you know what i'm saying or like just any of that where it's like you should at least give her the benefit of the doubt you know, and he told me, he's like, I've tried to talk to her about all this stuff a few times, and it's just not working out. And I'm like, all right, you know, I mean, if you, if you're trying to separate from her and it's pretty finalized, then I will respect that. But I mean, just being in that house made me feel like he should, he should just try to fix it. Like, I actually, like, kind of stepped away from him for a little while and just kind of like, maybe, I don't know, I felt like I wasn't sure if I wanted to, like carry on because I really with him because I really wanted him to try to fix stuff and then you know he just kind of says to me like there's no fixing it. Like, Alright, so we just picked up where we left off. Um but yes, yeah, so one. One one ago. Okay. And if that, that was so that was in the middle of July. Yeah, right. I think it was like the second I think it was the second weekend of July. I'm almost positive. Was was the relationship intimate by that time? Yes, it was. Okay. And then as far as his work truck goes, were you ever in his work truck? No. I just know which one it is, but I've never been never. in it. And then I think I asked you this, but the white vehicle. I know he drove that, uh, but were you ever in the white vehicle? One yeah. time? Okay. Can you just tell me about that? I'm trying to figure out where we went. I think it was like something quick. We take my truck everywhere. It was a while ago. I don't remember where it was at. Like, I think it was something quick. Like, I think he had to, like, run an errand or something at, like, the grocery store. Because he just, like, took his vehicle. But we, other than that, like, never. I was always in my truck. If I can remember, like, when that was, I'll let you know. But it, like, wasn't anything, like, we were going on a date. It wasn't, like, it was, like, nothing. I think it was, like, a quick trip to go somewhere. And it was just, like, hey, I'll drive, okay. Okay. That was actually going to be another question. Have you guys ever gone on vacation together? Yep. Or ever? Okay. We went to the sand dunes. It was pretty recent. It was a couple weeks ago. How'd, how'd that go? And how, how long the trip was that? Uh, we went for like a day. We left Saturday. We came back on Sunday. We stayed one night out there. And uh, do you do you think that uh, or did his did anybody know that you guys were going on that trip together? Uh, I think a lot of people knew, but they didn't know who it was with. So on your side or on his? No, or nobody on my side. I mean, people knew I was going to the sand dunes, but my friends don't question that. I was just like, I'm going to the sand dunes for the weekend. And then, um, I'm pretty...
pretty sure I asked him. I was like, does anybody know you're going to sand dunes? And he said yes. But he, I don't think he told me it was me, with me. I think he told me it was with some other people. So. Yeah. So you, and you're pretty confident that he didn't mention you? I don't think anybody in his life knows about me. I really don't. Like, at all. Mm -hmm. Like, I'd be willing to, like, say, like, 100%. I highly doubt anybody knows about me. Just don't see it. What about social media? I don't have yeah. it. You don't have any social media? I have nothing. So there was no interaction with, like, Facebook Messenger? Nope. Like I don't have Facebook. I don't have... I have nothing. I literally have nothing. Okay. I have an email. I don't use it for, like, general purposes, but we never even emailed. I, have, I don't have any social media. I haven't for a long time. I, I recently deleted my LinkedIn, but that was, like... Yeah, and I have had Facebook or since, like, 2015. I've never had, like, And then he finally came clean, and he was like, yeah, it's mine. 
and I knew. But I, of course you knew. Like, you know, come on, how would you not know that your wife is like, what is it, four months pregnant? I mean, seriously. So, but he, so he told me, and I just, um, I don't know. I've never, honest, like, I have never felt like he's lied to me. I've always felt like he's been pretty upfront with me this entire time. And then after that happened yesterday, between him lying to me or coming clean about lying to me and then um, his wife not coming home, I was like, you know what? I wonder if there's more to this story than I know, you know? And it's really hard for me to process this because I think he's a really good guy. And, you know, I'm worried about his wife and kids. Like, really worried about his wife and kids. Like, I don't know where they are. You don't know where they are. Nobody knows where they're at. And it's just freaking me out because those little girls are like, they're so little. And she's pregnant, you know? And it's like, where's their mom? Where are these babies? And it just, it makes me sad. And, and it's just this whole combination of like, she's still not back. And then him lying to me. And I'm just like, I don't, I just felt like I needed to talk to you guys and tell you guys, like, I'm concerned. I will help you in any way that you guys need help. I just, I don't know. Well, and that, that may be something that we ask of you at some point. Um, you know, that there, there obviously is things that you could, that you could help with. I mean, yeah, I don't know how many people who he's comfortable speaking with, but um, as you said in the beginning, if he texts them, you think he can answer the questions. So that, that may be something that we, uh, we could use some help on. You guys you can keep my name out of the newspapers for a little while. It'd be nice. Yeah, well, well our, our report gets you know, filed internally. We don't turn that over to, to the news media. So yeah, I know. Uh, we'll have to see how this case goes in the oh, future. I understood. But do you, do you, can you now looking back, you know, knowing that he lied to you about his, his wife being pregnant, is there anything else that you can think of that, that he lied about? I know, mean, or that now jumps out at you to say, wait a minute, he told me this, but maybe that's not true. I mean, not really. I, I still, like, I took everything he said to me at face value. I try to do that for everybody. I mean, I mean, unless you guys know something, I don't know. Um, but that's, like, the truth that I have been given. So that's, like, what I know, you know? And I, I, I don't want to go back and, like, second guess, like, all of that. Because to me, it seemed real. It still does. This whole, this whole situation doesn't seem real. But at the time, it was just like, I'm separating from her. This is what's going on. You know, and he seemed like he was pretty proactive about, you know, like, trying to get a new spot and, like, trying to get everything set up. And, and I mean, it seemed like he was all about that, you know. Like, I remember we were in talking about it. I was like, because I was like, are you going to get a two-bedroom or a three-bedroom? And he's like, I want a two. I'm like, why don't you get a three? And then he's 20 years old can have a room. And he's like, I can't afford that. And I was like, all right. And then he was like, I'm going to do a two-bedroom. And then I remember telling him, like, oh, me and my sister had bunk beds when we were little kids. It's kind of cool. They might like it. And he was just like, all right, you know. And so I was, like, kind of helping him with that. I was like, we'll go find something that'll be good and help you guys out. And then I was like, um... I just, like, I tried. I really tried to, like, handle that whole relationship in the most, like, decent manner that I could, I guess you could say. So, did, did he ever talk to you about who his closest friends were, or confidence, or who's best buddy was? I mean, I know he has a few. His buddy Mark out in San Diego is a good friend to him. And do, you, do you know his last name? No. Just Mark in San Diego? It's just, I don't oh, that's ask. Fine. That's I have fine. no that's reason fine. to. Um, and then, uh, his buddy Nick, that I know lives somewhere over by me, I'm sure you guys are probably already talked to all these people. Um, I'm sure there is. Um, yeah, I don't know. That's about it. I mean, I'm sure he's offhandedly mentioned other people, but nothing has, like, sparks the memory. Just as far as you know, though, those are the names of the I would guys say that those about. are probably, like, his two closest buddies. Did he have a lot of friends? I don't male know. or female? I think so. I think there was like a lot of like couples that him and his wife hung out with. Mm -hmm. I think so. He's always going to like birthday parties and stuff with his kids, so I assume that's how that went. Is he an outgoing guy yeah. or yeah. social or he's more of a private type? I would consider him to be an introvert. I think around me he opened up a little bit more. I think he just felt like he didn't like yeah. he was just kinda like a 
three relationship that probably because there's no like strings attached i don't know like i'm not gonna judge him or i don't know if it was because i was like his little secret that he felt like he could trust me with stuff but i think he was like pretty open with me usually but i would keep it And then, how about hobbies or interests? Anything? Cars. Cars? Is that it? In the gym. Cars. Did the, did the fitness thing, would you consider that to be anything out of the ordinary? You know, some people are they're not shaped, they start to get in shape and then it becomes an obsession? No, versus, I don't think he was... just a healthy, no, you know, I, physical was, person. That's exactly what it was. I did not mean to cut you off. I'm no, sorry. no, it's not. No, it was healthy. I think it was, he was in a good spot and he was working out probably, I don't know, five days a week or so. And I knew he ate pretty healthy and, and, uh, I think he was happy with his fitness level. I wouldn't consider anything like overly by any means. Like most people I know who go to gyms live clean eating and work out four or five days a week, pretty much like he was. So nothing strange to me. Okay. What about finances? Did you ever mention any kind of financial difficulty? A little bit. Was that, uh, you know, the strain of a marriage or spending too much money or credit card debt or what, what would you think that? He just said when they sold the house, I said, this is when he first started talking about putting the house up for sale. I was like, I was like, you moving to another house right away. I was like, you gotta look because the Colorado market's pretty high. And it was just like, he's like, I think I'm going to move into an apartment and save up some money. And I was like, don't you like have money in the house? And he's like, I'm gonna pay off some debt and then I'm gonna save some money. Did he tell you that he sold it? No, he told me that the realtor was supposed to come over sometime on Monday. They had a meeting with the realtor and the house was supposed to go up on Monday. Something to the effect of the house was pretty much supposed to go up for sale. This past Monday? So this, yeah, like two days ago. He specifically said the house would go up for sale Monday? He said it was supposed to, or I don't know if it was that it was going up for sale or that he was talking to the realtor, but either way, I don't remember exactly what it was. But something effective like everything was about to like start on Monday with their whole transition, getting everything finalized. Okay. Yeah, and he said that she was the one who found the realtor. Was there anything else that he said that was significant about Monday? You know, were they, was he going to move out? Was she going to move out? No, nothing like that. Nothing like that at all. It was just like we were going to sell the house. And he said that they were both looking for spots. And I was like, well, where is she going to stay? And he's like, you know, because I, I wanted him to be in close proximity to her after they split so that he was always like, like a quick drive to the kids, you know? I remember when I was young, my dad and my mom lived really far apart and like, I still saw them both frequently, but it was just like, it was just kind of like a long drive for everybody, and I think just being that close proximity, it's like, it's just good. It's healthy for your kids. And so I remember asking him, like, you know where she's going to stay? And he's like, probably somewhere around this area, and he didn't give me anything exact. And then I asked him again, like, recently, because he started getting more serious about trying to play, and he was like, I think she's just going to stay in Frederick. And I was like, all right, you know? And then, like, one time that first time when I was like, do you know where she's going to stay? And he's like, she's probably going to stay around here. And I'm like, is she going to stay in this house? And he's like, she's going to put this house by herself. And I was like, all right. And that was the first time he told me, like, yeah, we're going to put it up for sale. Like, once they could do that. Did he tell you what she does for a living? How she earns money? Kind of, sort of. I know she, like, works for some company that does, like, a lot of online stuff. And it's like fitness stuff or vitamin stuff or I'm not I don't completely know exactly what that is but I know she has to like network with a lot of people on social media to do it so I'm not 100% sure what you would call that because I guess she's like a sales rep kind of sort of would be what it is called but that's what she does for me gotcha okay. How about, oh, did you ever see him with any weapons ever carry a knife or a gun or ever talk about weapons of any kind no, no. And in fact, we even, like, so we talk about, like, current events. Like, it's a big thing in my life. I talk about current events with all of my friends. And I asked him one day, like, if you want, I will send you articles. Like, I'll read the news, and every, like, once a week or so, I'll find an article that I think is interesting. It's about all sorts of different stuff. And I'll send it to one of my friends, and I'll be like, what do you think? And we'll have, like, debates and discussions about it. And I remember, um, 
it was going on a shooting that I sent him. And I was like, what do you think? And he even told me, he's like, I don't own guns. I don't keep guns in the house. He's like, I think it's crazy. We work in the oil industry and a lot of like, they're very red, red, red spirit people and they love guns. And he, he was just talking to me about it. He's like, I don't understand why some of these people insist on that. Like, and I know he's referring to like the group that we like, work around not necessarily our co-workers but just like oil field people he's like i don't know why they insist on having like 10 weapons he's like why could you possibly need that many guns it doesn't even make sense to me he's like it's not necessary and then he's just like i don't keep guns in the house um because of my kids so, I was like, okay. so that actually did come up once but it was like completely because we were having a do you know if he was ever in the military not that i know of and do you know where he's originally from? North Carolina. North Carolina. You have to talk about that? Yeah. Uh, about upbringing and, you know, how that was. Any, anything significant that you remember about that? Anything traumatic? Anything? No, 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 no. Nothing that jumps out. Mm -hmm. well, <coughs> Mom and dad were still married. And he said he was really close with his dad. His dad's really in the car, too. So he said that they really relate on that. And he said they're just wasn't a lot of opportunity in North Carolina, like for good jobs or anything around where he was at. And, uh, that's what I'm so some friends, some friends moved out here and him and her came and visited them and they just really liked it, thought there was a lot better jobs and, and so that's why he moved. But no, no hostility back there. Good relationship with his family back in Yeah, Carolina. definitely, definitely. Okay. But I know he's got a sister and she's got two kids. Is his sister in North Carolina? I think so. I think so. As far as I know. Because I know he went to go visit them recently. And he got to see her. I don't know if she was out visiting or if she was there. But I think she did. So. Okay. Did he talk about going back to North Carolina recently? Oh, yeah. I know he went. He just got back. Mm -hmm. okay. All right. So you knew. Did you know uh, who he went with? Uh, he went by himself and met her out there. I know she was already out there. Is there anything else you can think of that uh, you think might be pertinent and might be, you know, looking into this? Not really. I mean, that's, I told his name, Dave. Mm -hmm. Dave. Yeah. I told Dave. Like, you know, I think this is information. I don't know if it can, like, help you to solve anything, but it's like, I was a big part of his life recently, so I just figured that you guys should be aware of it. Definitely. You know, and I yep. will cooperate with you on anything that you can. And he, so I asked him yesterday, so yeah, we can add this in there. Um, asked him yesterday to kind of like give me some space because I'm getting to the point with this situation where I am very concerned for his wife and children and this whole situation is just very unhappy for me as it is, I'm sure, for everybody else who's involved with this situation. And um, after like finding out like, oh yeah, and like I've also got this child on the way with her and just wasn't very honest with me I told him please give me time to heal and please give me time to process this and he's like are we done are we done and I told him I said no we're not yes we are but he doesn't need to know that I just told him that because I was just like trying to find a way to like distance myself from him without alerting him that I'm really uncomfortable with everything that's going on right now um you know I told him numerous times yesterday that I was scared and, um, you know, I told him that I was scared not because of, like, for, like, my own safety, but I told him, like, I'm scared because I don't know where she's at. I'm scared because, I, like, I'm scared for them. And then I told him, you know, the fact that you weren't honest with me, like, I don't feel like I know you as well as I did. And that, you know, that's uncomfortable for me, too. Like, this whole situation is just, it's scary. It's, it's not good. So, um, I just asked him if he could give me some space, and then I told him, I was like, when they find your family and they're all right, I was like, then you can go ahead and text me. I was like, but until then, like, I don't really think it's a good idea for me to talk to you, and that's as far as I've gotten. But I can tell you right now, if I were to text him and just say whatever I needed to say, he would do it. So, I don't know, and I even asked him a few times yesterday, it was like, what happened? Like, where's your family? He's like, I don't know. Like, I don't know.
And then, well, when he says he doesn't know, do you, do you believe that? I mean, I think about this situation, and honestly, like, I've never seen him be anything but gentle. And I see the way that he, like, <laughs> he gets so happy when he talks about his kids. And I just, you know, and the fact that he was, like, never ill-mannered, even when he was discussing her, and the fact that they were separating. I always considered him to be a really decent man, so the fact that they're still missing, I mean, I don't really think he would harm them. I don't. I mean, and I think that's also a reason that it took me two days to come to you guys, because this is like, I think she left. I mean, and that's still in the back of my head is like a thought where it's like, maybe she took off. I mean, maybe she did. I mean, he, like I said, like he said that obviously their financial situation wasn't that great. I'm like, well, maybe she just left because she didn't want to deal with it. Like, if we're over, like, you can deal with it. I don't know. I mean, I, I just... I've had so many different scenarios running through my head, but I don't think he would do it. And, and he didn't indicate to you that she was going to leave? Did he ever say to you, like, Monday, she's going to be leaving, she's going to be going somewhere? He told me they had a conversation in the morning, and he told me that she, cause she came home, like, really late, I think, that night. And he told me that, um, when he woke up, he said he was sleeping, and when he got back, and when he woke up, there was a text message from her that said, she, I don't know if it was a text, I don't know, but she just said she asked him to wake her up before he went to work. And I guess he went to wake her up and she informed him that uh, the child that she was carrying did not belong to him. And I asked him if he believed that and he said, no, I think she's just saying that out of spite. So I don't know if he's telling me that because he's trying to like, somehow make me feel better that maybe it's not his kid because he lied to me or if that like legitimately happened I don't know um but he told me that and then I guess he said that she said that she was gonna like go to some friend's house or something and I guess he tried to ask her about it a few times and wasn't really getting anything from her so I think he left um but I don't think it was planned to take him off with this for three or four days I think it was like this is what I'm doing today I don't know I'm not really sure did he say if that discussion they had in the morning if that was contentious, if there was any anything said, you know, threatening, threatening or anything that would, you know, significant in that conversation? Not really, but I mean I'm sure finding out that the child that your wife is carrying isn't yours is probably painful, but you know, he didn't express to me that kind of like that they were arguing. As far as I know, they didn't even really like argue that much in the first place. They just had different opinions on how to do stuff and it just wasn't working on the marriage. But he just never like, oh I fight with my wife all the time. Like that was never ever anything he ever brought up to me at any point. Do you think he had any reason to believe that the child wasn't her? I mean is there a possibility that she was seeing somebody? I mean maybe she's at home all day, right? It would probably be pretty easy for her to have an affair. Um I don't know. Nothing that he ever mentioned to you. Prior to that? Yeah. No. He never said, you know, I think she's having an affair, or she's spending too much time with so-and-so. No, not at all. I don't even think he would notice. I mean, like, realistically, it's like, no one else knew about us. And she's home all day, so that frees up, like, that much more time. So, no. But, I mean, he could have been unaware. But, I mean, he even said, I think she said it out of spite. I don't even think he took that whole situation seriously. Mm -hmm. So and then he did he did admit to you that it wasn't that it was his child. He believed it was his child. Later, because I kept asking him, I'm like he's like, It's not mine and I was like, How are you gonna tell me that she just told you that she's having an affair and you tell me you don't believe that she's really having an affair, but that the kid's not yours? And I'm like, That doesn't make sense to me. And I was just like, Stop lying to me and not lying to me. I thanked him for telling me the truth. I didn't want him to think that I was like, you know, I did all for all this. But I just wanted to take a step back and just kind of like look at this situation without like any like emotion, like positive emotion that I have attached to him. And like at the end of the day, you know, there's an entire, uh, there's a mother and two children, one on the way, so like two and a half, that can't be found right now. And it's like, I don't care about anything that's going on with me and him. I don't care about anything that's going on with him and the media. I don't care about any of that. Like, all I care about is helping you guys to find this family because they're missing. Did you see that on this?
Uh, talk to you, an interview with me. One, most of the stuff that I saw was like just a photo, it was like a short excerpt, and then um, today I saw one from him. What did you think of that? When they were interviewing him? Yeah. Is that, is that the guy you know? See, we don't know him, but obviously we, we do. So when you see somebody, and you see the manner of them, and the way they're talking, did that, did that strike you in any way? I mean, he's kind of got an introverted personality type, so like he's kind of like laid back with things, anyways. I think, I think, I feel like he's like going through shock with all of this. Like, just I told you the night that I talked to him on the phone, like um, Monday night, like he was calm, but you could just hear it in his voice that he was just like concerned. Like I could hear it. Like his voice just sounded a little bit different. Kind of similar like that. But it was like like it's like you're trying to like hold back the tears kind of thing. Like hold back like when you're just bawling your eyes out on the phone or in front of a bunch of cameras. I don't know. It's but do you think he's kind of an even skill type of guy? Always. Mild manner. Always. Always. So he didn't, he did not, not highs and lows, he's not one of these people who gets upset quickly or gets depressed quickly. Or no, no. Either. I mean, and he has moments of, like, happiness. I mean, of course I see him when he's, like, happy and things are going really well, but just in general, I think he's a pretty calm individual. Okay. And, and, and again, this is just anything you want to say or anything you think. What do you, what do you think happened? Do you have any theories? Do you have any thoughts of what might have? I don't know how much stuff is going into my head. I know. I hate it. I don't even like theorizing. I'm like, I don't... I don't know. I really hope... What do I really think? I'm hoping that they have a lot more debt than he let on to, and I'm hoping she didn't want to deal with it, and she wanted to legitimately start a new life, and I'm hoping that she just wanted to just give me, like, slap and slap and all that shit. That's what I'm hoping. Is there anything you want to ask? No. Yeah. You good? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it's one of these things, too. Is a lot of times what happens is after you have an interview like this, you might start thinking, you know, if he asked me this question or I just thought of something, feel free to give a call. Because usually you'll, people will think of something after the fact. You know, spending less than an hour at the park. Um, you might think, you know what, in July, I remember he said this, or I remember this happened, you know, in early August. If any, if any of that comes to your mind, just, uh, just reach out to your call. And, uh, you know, we appreciate any insight. We don't know what happened. We don't know. I mean, this could be, a, a, you know, a wide range of things at this point. Obviously, our job is to figure out what happened, and that's what we're going to do. So, um, the quicker we can get there, though, you know, if there's a... Oh, there's hope, right? There's always hope that they're okay and we I want to get so. them home safely and that so. and, and it's possible. There's a range of possibilities. So our, our our job is to try to resolve this as quickly as possible. There's a whole bunch of us working on this and we will day and night until we resolve it. So but in the meantime, you're 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 in a unique position. I know, that's why I kind of said that. Well, when babies, man, the babies, that woman, like that whole situation, like that is I'm here because of those three and her unborn, but I'm here for those three, but I'm also here because I, I am in a unique position, and I really want to help you guys. Well, we appreciate that. I think uh, it's obvious. I mean, we, we can sense, you know, anybody can sense sitting here how that you do care, yeah, and, that, and that, yeah, there's little, there's little girls involved, and there's babies involved here, and we all want to see them home safely. Mm -hmm. So, so again, and you are in a unique position because there's no one in, in his life that is in your shoes. So there are certain things that he might say to you that he wouldn't say to somebody else, or there might be something that you could find out about that somebody else, nobody else could. So we'll have to see how that goes and how see how the investigation progresses. Um, so we may reach back out to you, but uh, for now, just my main thing would be is if you hear from him and, and you think you should tell us about it, please call me. If you think of something else that happened, even if you think, you know what, it's really not that significant, but maybe I should have mentioned it, please call me and tell me. Because every little piece can help. You know, one of the things, I, I'm not even sure that I asked you this, but maybe I did, but is there any particular places that you guys ever went that stood out? Did he have a special place that he wanted to go with you to go for a walk or to go view the sights or anything like that? Every place that we went was like my idea. And I think all of it was special to him because I really took time to 
go to places that you would like, but it was all stuff that I did. Okay. Every time. From dinner, dinner. Like any any place we went, like it was something that I did. It was like, hey, I know you would like this. What do you think? And he was always all about it. But like going camping was my idea. You know, we went out a couple other times. My idea, like all of it was my idea. He was all about it. So he was just wanted to spend time with you. Yes. Yeah. I don't think he cared where it was at. Okay. Okay. Well, if something jumps out, if you think about a camping trip or something, and, and something that was said or something that was somehow significant about that, again, you know, feel free to give a call. Let me know. Uh, because, again, we just don't know. And it's one of those things where somebody might actually, a neighbor, a coworker, somebody might have a piece of information that makes the difference in the case. So, And you may have that, that piece of information. We just don't know yet. Um, obviously, we're going to be interviewing everybody. Everybody from family, friends, coworkers. You know, right down the line. So we got a lot of work to do, but we really appreciate you reaching out. And hopefully, we'll, we'll, we'll get to the bottom of this quickly. Where's he at? Right now, I don't know. I know that he's been interviewed um, in Frederick uh, by the police there, and he's probably going to be interviewed again, maybe multiple times, um, and family members as well. I think that he had some friends he was going to stay with. Um, that they wanted to, you know, we wanted to look at the house. He, I don't even know if he's gone back to the house or if he's with friends. I, don't, I honestly don't know. But he may reach out to you. I mean, it's one of these things in a, in a situation like this. You tend to reach out to the people who are closest to you um, and, and, and want to, you know, want to talk about things. And so what am I supposed to do if he does that? If, if, if he does call you, obviously we would like to know anything and everything that he says. Because, again, he may tell you something that he's not telling us. And also, even something that may seem obvious to you, if he told us something opposite, it's important. So if he I said, understand. I'm staying at Joe's house, and he tells you he's staying at Chris's house, or Bob's house, or whatever, and that's not true, well, then that could be significant. You know, if he tells you that he went someplace and he didn't go there, that could be significant. So, even though you, if, you, if you do have contact with him and you think it's just a normal conversation, there could be something that's significant about that. Do you want to uh, Not yet. Not yet. That's one of those nice. things. I don't really want to do that right now. Right. And we're not going to ask you to do that at this point. I mean, we have a lot of investigative avenues. We have a lot of things that we can do. I know this is difficult for you, and I don't want to make anything uh, more stressful than it already is. So right now, I would just say sit tight. The most valuable thing you can do mm -hmm. is just think of anything else that might be useful and let us know. And then if he contacts you, I, I would say it's okay to hear what he has to say. And if you can let us know what that is, that can be very helpful. You know, one of these things is if, if, if something... If something happened that shouldn't have happened, then there's usually a mistake, right? There's usually something that's said or something that's done that, that comes out. So even things that may seem completely innocent may actually want to be important. Are you getting a divorce? Are they separating? I'm just curious. Well, like, I here, just want to know now because it's like yeah. I've been living this whole thing and I'm like, was it a lie? I don't know. Like when I found out that she had a baby on the way, I was like, it just... It made me like wonder. I just don't know. Well, so I can tell you this: Phil and I have not talked to him. I I haven't even seen him, other than the, you know him on, you know, on the on the uh, news. So I don't know specifics. We probably have 50 people, I would guess. Yeah. Is that accurate? Working on this right now. Okay, and it, it may it may want to be 150 yeah. people by the end of today. So there's different different investigators doing different things. So I don't necessarily know what's going on with him. And our focus is just to check all the boxes as quick as possible so we can get all the facts. So I don't know. The honest answer is I don't know if he was really getting divorced, if they were really going to separate, if they were really sell the house. I don't know the answer. So we'll find out. We'll find out soon. And uh, actually, good point. I mean, do you have any other questions for us? Is there anything that we can... I'm so sad about the situation. I just want them to find all three of them, like, alive and happy and well and everything just be gone. I want everybody to go home.
Well, we greatly appreciate it. I would say thank you very much. Hang in there. I know this isn't easy. This is a difficult situation. Right. So hang in there. If I hear anything, I will reach out to you. Okay? I just I don't know how quickly that's going to happen. Uh, in the meantime, again, feel free to reach out. And, um, and if, if you feel like taking a phone call, you take the phone call. If it's a text message, you can, you can do that. That's up to you. I'm not going to direct you at this time uh, to do anything. But if, if it comes to that, where we think that that might be helpful, then we'll reach back out. Be just me, I would say texting because it's in writing and you don't have to get personal. But that's just me. I mean, I asked him but to I, leave me alone. He's pretty yeah. respectful of the things that I have to say to him, so I think it's pretty hard for him to have me not talking to him. So at some point, if he caved and he did try to talk to me, it wouldn't surprise me. But if he also respected what I had to say and like continued to give me space, I think he would respect that too. I mean, I told him numerous times that day that I was scared, so I don't know if it was like, you know, I'm concerned for your family, so I don't know. I don't know how he interpreted that. But we'll, we'll see as the you know as the time goes on. Um, but uh, but that that's it for now. And again, we'll we'll reach back out to you if need be. One thing actually, I did want to ask that you called the phone again. So the text messages between you and him, you deleted those. Yeah, I, that was yesterday. Like as soon as I found out. He was honest with me. Like we talked a couple more times after that, and then I was just like, I don't want you to contact me, and I just wiped them out. If 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 that's something that became necessary for us to try to retrieve, is that something that would be okay with you? Uh, I'm sure we could work on my phone records, but I use that phone for work, so I'd appreciate it if I could like keep this. Is there another way for you guys to go about doing yeah. that, like you know, through the phone company yeah. or something? So there's special software we can plug your phone into, and even if it's uh, deleted, we can still retrieve the contact oh, okay. content rather, um, and then just you know preserve that and give the phone back. That's of course yeah. actually. So you're not going to, like, take it from me, though, right? Because I just need it for work. Yeah, no, no, okay. we're not, we're, okay. we don't okay. need to, like, take your phone and then you don't get it back. I mean, yeah. there is a process about getting the information from the phone, but we have people who do that. Understood. Right. And, and it, it wouldn't be a big intrusion. Okay. But it just, and, and you think about this, too, right? Because if you think after, after this, this answer, John, if you think, hey, you know what, that text message that he wrote, you know, that was a little strange. Then maybe we do need one. You know, we want to that. But, but for now, I don't know that it's necessary, but if it becomes necessary, we may come back to you and say, hey, can we just take a look at your phone and, you know, and, and we'd like to retrieve those text messages. Um, and again, it may not even be the content, it may just be the time and location. Right. So, well, know, and I mean, as long as you guys would give it back, I mean, that's one sure. thing. I just, yeah. like, I just need it for work. I don't even pay for it and a dark purpose, so okay. I can't really just like not have that would be a problem. Did he have a work phone and a personal phone? Yes. Do, do you have numbers for both? Uh, I mean, I could look up his work phone number on my, like, directory and thing for... Did he contact you on both? The first couple times that we talked for, like, a few days, it was on his work phone, but then it shifted to his personal phone. So, it's like, I don't want any personal conversations on the work phone, because we're pretty separated at work, and I'm trying to keep it that way at work. Right. I don't think anybody at work even knows that we like talk. Like we're not affiliated with each other. Okay. Yeah, if we could get uh, both numbers, that'd be great. Uh, just to make sure that we have them. I don't know how to do that on here. <laughs> I think there's like a directory in here somewhere on my thing. How do you, you smash it? Like it looks like. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those broken screen screensavers. Right? I know. We're gonna know also that. Um, I'm going to put a contact section and dial the phone. Oh, for the thing? I hear a little rattle. Yeah, it's going to take, take time. Yeah. And, and that looks like shit. <laughs> yeah, not that. I don't know what it is. <laughs> okay. I'm well, sure you, you could you, get it. You, yeah. you have his personal cell phone. Yes, yeah. that's what's okay. saved in my phone. I don't have his work phone okay. saved in my phone. Okay. I was and hoping I, I that know. I could look it up on my work directory because it's like linked to my, my email, I think, but I don't know how to 
Well, that's it. We're gonna actually. Can, can we get that from just his personal number? I'm sure we have it already, but can we just get that? Yeah, and then the, the work phone. We'll get that from work. Yeah, we can get that. Yeah. Nine one zero three zero nine one seven zero two. Okay. That's the number that we have. Okay. And then one more question, as far as because I know you weren't doing the social media thing, but did you have an email address that you guys were in contact? No email. I think we had like one email, but it wasn't like us talking. It was like I was trying to help them with the equipment that I operate and they use in the field, it's like a gas monitor kind of thing. So just that it was like a quick talk, but like pretty much everything that we've had has been like on his social media. Like I said, I did like one email. I don't even remember exactly what I had to do with the gas monitor. Something was wrong with the gas monitor, so I think he came to me about that. And then um, I think we we talked a few times on his work phone, and then it was like, no, because at that point it was still professional, but I kind of knew that it was like getting to the point where it was going to be a personal thing, and that was when I was like, we should use your phone, because that's not fair to me. And this is like my work phone and my home phone, but it's mine. Right. So, I only have one. Okay. Yeah, so, I mean, any correspondence that would be of, like, any sort of staff phone number that I just gave. Okay, fair enough. And actually, I don't know what I asked in the beginning, because I don't, I just, I, your full name? <laughs> I know it's Nikki, but wow. is it Kessinger? Well, we, we came right down once you called. Kess, yeah. Kessinger? Yeah. 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 N-I-C-H-O-L? Yeah. Yeah. And then, uh, you did work? Well, I said 1988. That's it. Can you think of anything else? I think I just gave you guys everything that was on my mind. So. Okay. So I did a good job asking you lots of questions. Hopefully, hopefully I gave you something that you can use. Just one that accelerated because of the babies. Yeah, yeah that no, and that's, We don't know them, but yep, there's somebody out there. As long as you're safe, we're cool with it. But yeah. Ugh, you know. And that's the main reason we get involved. Anytime yeah. there's a missing kid, uh, you know, local agencies can reach out to us for additional manpower, essentially. So yep. I always want to get that resolved as quickly as possible. Absolutely. Yeah, and that's the key. And I can tell you this, we're doing everything it takes. So well, the more clues, the faster it gets. Hopefully. Right. That's, that's and exactly that's, right. The that's faster. why we thought we'd we get through to do that. So. Yeah. Right. No, and I, and I think your your information is very helpful. It also gives us a lot of insight too, which is helpful for the investigation. So you guys with the local or with the feds? We're feds. We're both FBI okay. agents. So you're we're just helping out, out yep. with the yeah. feds are small. Yeah, Frederick's a small yeah. MPD and, uh, you know, a case like this requires a lot of manpower. Yeah, I used to do water treatment plants up there in uh, Erie and oh, yeah. all of those. And, man, they, there were just, there's not enough, a lot going on in those towns. You know, those, it's not overcrowded, no traffic, no, I mean, it's a lot. Yeah. Right. It's a lot smoother yeah. way of life, so I couldn't imagine that they would have 50. No, well, it's that's just a one can. detective and a few patrol officers. Yeah, that's so. what it's like. yeah. that's, and that's one of the ways that we can help, just because we have a lot of people with our resources. Yeah. Yeah. It's good to know. Yeah. Alrighty, well, I'm sorry about the mosquito bites as well. Yes. I know that's I've said as long as you got seems, you to go with like <laughs> they're They're fine, and you and I are getting better yeah, here, so. That's side of the thing. That's
second. Yep.